Um, just a, as a researcher, I'm grateful to you for the record that you made, whether it was uh, intended to be for wider consumption or not. It was not intended yeah. to go anywhere except for the MOD. Yeah, but the, the fact is you, you made the record, you made the recording, and uh, I think we all owe a lot to that because it's, it's, the, it's the, probably the, the most thorough. Well, I recorded everything I did all the time. Yeah, beats making notes. My boss and I both had recorders and we had the little machine in the office. Yeah. It was just made by Lanier. Yeah. You were in the this silver birch the forest here. They were just coming in. Of course, yeah. And people laugh, I said, when I wanted to do a program and wanted to copy my memo, I had to go on the internet to get it because we didn't keep a copy. <laughs> Nobody wanted to be involved. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I shouldn't have been the guy to write the memo. It should have been my boss. Yeah. <laughs> but nobody wanted to touch it. Yeah. He got you to do it. That's, that's, that's hilarious. So typical. Something that's always interested me. What, what, was it that, what was it that made you decide, to take that decision to bring a Geiger counter with you that night? Because the cops kept talking about strange things and all, and I said, since Harden Nevels was coming... He was a disaster preparedness guy, and who was a professional photographer, by the way. Yeah. Had his own dark room and everything. Yeah. And I knew him well because he and I both had Nikon F2s, which had just come out. Nice. And uh, I knew he had a good camera. So I said to his boss, have him bring his camera and meet me at the office. And I said, by the way, have him pick up a Geiger counter or two and bring it along just to show that there's nothing there. That was just an afterthought. It wasn't planned, really. What was it? Did you have it in your mind just to kind of show show people that it was safe or...? Yeah, that there was nothing there. Interesting that you did. It's... Because the cops were all obsessed with this. Yeah. I Enough see what you mean. seen things and, you know, how the gossip goes. Yeah. We're, we're getting close to that oak tree now. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. What was your first thought when you did start to get radiation readings? I thought there had to be some kind of an explanation. Somebody had done something yeah. out here years yeah, that, ago. Yeah, there must be, yeah. I knew there was a lot of secret stuff going on in Orford Ness. You know, right. That's where your nuclear triggers were developed and a whole lot of things happened. I, I didn't know that. Oh, yes. Interesting. Yes. There was a good documentary a, a little while Gordon ago Kinsey. with Marco Portillo. Right. If you can try and get it on Catch Up TV. Oh, look out for that. Yeah, uh, it was Michael, Michael Portillo's secret. I told you that, didn't I? Well, Gordon Kinsey wrote a book called uh, Secrets... I have it on my slide. Secret site or something. Orford Ness. I have the book at home. Also the one on Bodzi he did. And he talks all about all oh, Cobra Mist and everything, which was all long gone in 1977. It all pulled out. That was another big secret project. A little, right. A listening post with antennas you wouldn't believe. Yeah. But, Speaking of antenna, I'll forget if I don't ask you now. Um, on the way... On the way down here, about three quarters of the way from the car park to the barrier we went through, on this side of the road, there's four concrete blocks. It looks like there may have been some kind of communications equipment there. I don't suppose you remember anything? I don't remember Like that, that any no. kind of landmark there? Interesting, yeah. That, that looks but like... we had a lot of, how should I say, highly classified listening things here. I can, I here can at imagine, the base yeah. and at Martlesham Heath. I can, I can well imagine, well, we yeah. did. I mean, it was we, classified. I was not even entitled to know what it was. Right. Even though I was there occasionally and looked at the facility and all. Yeah. Uh, as far as what they were doing and how they were doing it and whatnot. I know that there was even out where I am. I'm I'm in northeast Hertfordshire, about an hour and a half from here, and uh, just a, a few short miles from where I live, there's a very very small um, disused U.S. Air Force base called RAF Barkway. <laughs> no, uh, it's, it's tiny. I think it must be the smallest U.S. Air Force base in the world, or one of them, one of the smallest. It's really small. All they've got there is a big radio mast, very big. You can practically see to London from the top of it, um, and and a, and a bunker, mm -hmm. and a few small buildings, and that's it. And I went into the I went into the bunker, and there's no written records anywhere. The only thing I could find that gave me any clue about about uh, what it might have been, is there was a sticker on one of the cupboards, 81st TFW. Oh, right. Yeah. Fascinating connection with this place, mm -hmm. right out where I am. Yeah. Yeah, most of it fell under the 2164th Com Squadron, which was part of the wing. Yeah. So, and the commander was a very good personal friend of mine, Tony Casa. 
And I've gone back to him, tried to get him to tell me some things, and he doesn't remember much of anything. Yeah. Because his comm people worked on our sensors in the weapon storage area. And the first night, one of his the men... The microwave were, sensors. The, the what? The microwave uh, movement sensors, were mm -hmm. they? Or? Yeah. The made mouse system. Uh, the first night, one of his people was working in the tower on the sensors trying to repair it. There was a problem in one of the sectors. And he needed some parts, but in the meantime, he saw a UFO. He and the tower operator saw a UFO fly over. That was the first night. The third night, he was back out there. The parts came in, and he was installing the parts when I was out in the forest. And they saw something again. So he didn't know what to do. So he called his supervisor, who gave me a statement. And his supervisor said, where well, are you going to report it? He said, well, the cops aren't going to, so I'm not going to say anything. Very so wise. he came back, and he was debriefed and told by the OSI and told, you didn't see anything, you didn't hear anything, nothing happened. There was a lot and of that. The supervisor from what I hear. said, "Well, mm. you will you tell me more?" And he said, "I can't talk about it." So wow. I got a supervisor's statement, but he won't talk about it. They that, scared him half to that's death. Such a shame. <laughs> such a shame. So many people aren't talking because it, I'm sure there's a, there's a lot more we could learn. I did wonder with all the activity out there, you know, whether it was leaving aside what it was, whether it was Russian, Chinese, extraterrestrial, or whatever it was. I did wonder, with all the activity that was going on out there, whether perhaps there was some kind of submarine base down there or something that, we, that perhaps we don't know about. Well, Carl Fenty wrote a, two very good books called UFOs and, uh, and Water. Yeah. And he has documented a lot of stuff. USOs, as they, UFOs as they call them. UFOs and Water. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the oak tree is, is that it there? Yeah, I think we're getting close to it, yeah. Have you got the whole book? Absolutely, yeah, but oh, yeah, I've got, yeah. got it with me, yeah. yeah. You'll be in the next one, that's all right. That's yeah, yeah, Bowman's, yeah. I think that's yeah. the oak tree. Yeah. So we would have come up somewhere right in here to the fence line. So, so that that's the oak tree right there, isn't it? That, that's the first, that's there's actually the, the first, right, yeah, right, right there. It's a really there big is. one right there, you see it? That's it. It's, it's been here a long time. <laughs> do, you, do you remember seeing that on the night, or is that something that you discovered later? I, th I discovered it later. I, that night I wasn't looking for trees or anything. I yeah, don't of course, distinctly yeah. remember anything. Probably too dark as well. Except the, the vehicles were parked up there. Yeah. And we came out here. Yeah. I understand it was a single strand barbed wire fence. There might have been more than one strand, but it was broken down. It wasn't. In, it, yeah. it was in poor repair. Let's put it that way. There's one just like that on the other side, and I, I, I gather that the position of the fence might have moved slightly now too. Uh, could be. You've got about 20, maybe even 30 meters. There was a burn between there us too. and the. There was what? Sorry. A burn. A burn. B e r m. You know. Oh, a berm, a bank. There still is. Yeah, there still there still is a little bit of a bank. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little bit of a bank there. Do you think it was right by this oak tree that you emerged into the field? Off the wall after a little bit. And there's the farmhouse right there. There's the oak tree. I can go first and beat the track if you like. Yeah. I can I can just step that down if you want. Yeah, you see the burn. We were right up there. If you were a bit further this way, I've, I've cleared a path. Okay. I I think I know roughly where you were, but we'll see how accurate my path is.